is value investing dead? I love these kind of uh, headlines because it always tells you <laughs> that it's not. I mean, they don't say that explicitly. They say the other thing. But anytime you see is something dead, that usually means uh, it has is, is bound to uh, jump back up at some point. Look, man, we don't know. Uh, I've said many times before, I'm 100% in value. Uh, the VTV is what I own exclusively. That's a value, uh, the Vanguard large cap or value ETF. And look, I'm not saying you should buy it. I have no idea, don't care. But uh, if you look historically, the one metric that always rings true, historically, it does not mean it will in the future, is value. And the reason value is because low valuations lead to higher performance in the future. Higher valuations lead to lower performance in the future. There's just no two ways around that. I mean, and the reason for that is buy low, sell high. When you're buying things that are up in value, growth oriented, you're paying a premium for the price, for the stock. Premiums don't ultimately work that well in the long run. I mean, you, you can't, I'm not, we just don't know. We don't know. But I'm convinced of value. I'm convinced of buying low and selling high, and that will never change. So I'm putting my money on value. Do what you got to do. But you might be intrigued by this. So let's go into it. Uh, Dateline June 23rd, 2019. My man Rob, Rob the lawyer, had uh, sent me this, and I thought it'd be pretty interesting to chat on. Uh, Yun Lee, I'm not familiar with Yun. Uh, he writes this, is value investing dead? It might be, and here's what killed it. And we're just going to read it because I think it's interesting, actually. The long period of low interest rates is the first culprit to blame for the demise of value investing, according to A.B. Bernstein. Uh, quote, the outperformance of value might require higher interest rates, which could structurally be difficult to achieve in the foreseeable future. Let's get rid of this right here. Crack out. Did I get rid of that? Uh, uh, says uh, the head of uh, Bernstein's head of European quantitative strategy. Technology has disrupted industries in a way that may be permanently destroyed moats that used to exist around certain industries. Um, <laughs> there is <sighs> there is something called moat investing. I'm going to build this moat around my stock because no one can breach it. Essentially. I just the silliness of this stuff is mind. But it's a moat until it's not. You see what I'm saying? I mean, like, was it Nike was a moat until Under Armour came in? I, I just I don't know. I don't even know what the examples to use on that. But there is a moat until it's no longer a moat. And that's the thing about investing that drives you up the wall. People say I have this strategy. I back test this strategy. Blah blah blah. And you're like, okay, I have the moat. I'm trying to think what else would be a moat. I mean, I guess if you have the only steel manufacturing plant left in the U.S., you could say I have a moat. Uh, because the minute we put these Chinese tariffs on there, we're going to be the only game in town to manufacture steel. Uh, yeah, that's true for the time being. And then other firms will see the, the profitability on the wall and hopefully move their steel manufacturing from China back to the good old U.S. of A. And thus your moat has been breached. Anyway, the whole thing about moat investing always chuckle because we don't know. I mean, there's always uh, did. I mean, look at the newspapers, the New York Times, the best game in town when it comes to advertising, uh, you know, in terms of your you put your home, you listen to the newspaper. Well, those no one does that anymore. I mean, they do it through the internet now. Uh, what's going to happen? They're in it. I've mean, I have no idea. But that's the thing about these moat investing ideas. It's, it's silly. It's like there's a moat until it's not. Um, all right. Value investing might have lost its value. The classic factor investing strategy of picking stocks with uh, cheap book valuation uh, has become increasingly irrelevant thanks to central banks and technology, according to A.B. Bernstein. The long period of low interest rates is the first to blame for the demise of value investing. Uh, the Federal Reserve started its quantitative easing program to salvage the economy from the 2008 recession. Uh, but at the same time, an easier monetary policy lifted valuations across the board, leaving a smaller premium on cheap stocks. Let me take a sip of my Walmart dark roast coffee. Ooh, it's good. Hence the stretch of underperformance of value names. The uh, S&P 500 value ETF, the iShares, what's that ticker? Uh, I don't see the ticker on it. Um, I don't see the ticker on that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, it's an exchange traded fund that tracks the undervalued stocks in the S&P 500. It has been consistently lagging the market for the last five years. In fact, here's the uh, value, I guess, versus the S&P 500. And the value has been smote by the S&P 500 uh, over the last five years. In fact, I think is even I think the last 10 years values got hammered. Duration has been up as rates are so low. Um, 
Thus, the outperformance of value might require higher interest rates, which could be structurally difficult to achieve in the foreseeable future. In this sense, one could say that quantitative easing have stopped the mean reversion process that usually occurs in the economic cycle. And what they're saying is, uh, at the end of the day, uh, simply because the markets have everything, all assets have been raised because of the cheap money, uh, the people are willing to pay more for growth assets relative to value assets because everything has gone up. That, that's the argument. I, I don't agree with that. Everything reversed the mean, but we'll shall see. Uh, most destroyed. Most of the decade-long bull run has been held by a boom in the shares of major tech companies, which are disrupting traditional uh, industries. Their dominance has ruined the economic moats of many industries. Popularized, popularized by Warren Buffett, moats are the competitive advantage a, camp, a company has over new entrants and its rivals, which protect its market share. If Amazon is going to continue to destroy other parts of the retail sector, uh, then why should we expect mean reversion to still hold? We agree this dynamic is likely behind part of the underperformance of value, says uh, this an analyst. Technology has disrupted industries in a way that may permanently destroy moats that used to exist around certain industries. But, but I mean, then you're saying Amazon has its own moat. Uh, see, see, that's the thing. They're saying if technology, is, if, if technology has destroyed the moats, uh, we don't need to be value oriented. So we just go to Amazon because they have their own moat is what you're saying. So technology might have destroyed a moat over to the left, but on the right, we've created our other moats, you know, Amazon, uh, Facebook, uh, Google, Alphabet. I, I just don't agree with that. But I mean, because everything, unless there's regulation to keep uh, and new entrants out, then everyone will find a way uh, to, to take, uh, to exploit the inefficiencies of the competitors. I mean, do you ever, Amazon, they got guys pulling up in your house at 10 o'clock at night in cars that are unmarked. Do you know that? Drop, I mean, I, it's, I, I find that to be incredibly dangerous. I had, we had a guy drop something off about two weeks ago in a beaten down car. It's like at 10 o'clock at night. I was like, what the, I mean, literally, man, that's not good. And yeah, he just drops them off the, the, the door and moved on. But I was like, this, this is not good. Somebody's, someone's going to get shot doing that. And when it happens, Amazon is going to have to figure out a different way to do this stuff so because they can't rely on un, essentially undo, not undocumented, like illegal, but undocumented workers just showing up at somebody's house in the middle of the night to drop a package off. And they're going to cost money and wish to fix that. I mean, it's only a matter of time. So you can see this a mile away. All right, so here we see the S&P 500 growth strategy versus the S&P 500 value. And uh, it's hard to see, but the S&P 500 has just dominated over the last, what's that, five years. Again, over 10 years, the growth has killed value without question. And we're just it's not even close. So the green is the value. The black is the growth. Significant increase in black versus green. And that's what value investing says. Like, huh, if we want to buy low and sell high, well, what's lower and what's higher? Value investors also got burned by the massive rotation of growth stocks as appetite for fast-growing companies like tech surged. The trend favoring growth over value still persists in recent years as value names have underperformed over the last five. Most important growth assets are intangible, which in many, can see this is critical right here. Most important growth assets are intangible, which in many cases are not captured in book value and retain earnings, making the usefulness of book value and earnings questionable. Hey, keep thinking that, my friend. I tell you what. <laughs> so they're not tangible, which means we can't quantify them, which means it could be anything and we will be willing to pay a price of anything because we can't quantify the intangible assets in there. Some might call it goodwill. Like what is Amazon worth? But they have all these intangible assets. Well, the typical metrics of price to earnings and price to books. Well, if we have all these intangible assets, we can value at $8,000 billion trillion dollars. We can continue to pay huge P.E. ratios simply because we can't actually quantify the value of that moat. Hmm. Where have we heard this before? Huh. Seems like just in 1998, 1999, we heard this exact same thing. Value got hammered. No one wanted to touch value with a 10-foot pole. Everybody wanted to touch growth. I mean, look, I was in the business end. I remember like it was yesterday. The, the Vanguard Van, uh, Vanguard Windsor Fund, everybody wanted that guy, Met Neff, I always forget, Bill Neff, I think, I always wanted that guy's head on a platter because he was only churning out 8 to 10% rates for turn, while the U.S. Growth Fund was churning out 35% rates for turn, and no one wanted to touch Van, Vanguard Windsor, everyone wanted to touch U.S. Growth, but you're sitting there, how's Pets.com worth the money you're paying for it? doesn't matter, it's got intangible assets. 
And yet we look five years later and the value stocks dominated the growth stocks and it just, it is reverting to the mean. I mean, everything goes back and forth. To be sure, this could be just an extra long period of growth and investing outperformance coming as a result of the fallout from a once in a generation financial crisis. Once we return to more normal economic cycles, the two types of investing could begin to take turns again. Well, what's a more normal economic cycle? I don't know. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. I got no, look, man, do what you got to do on the investor side. But if you're following these ideas that moats, uh, you know, all these other things, uh, intangible assets, we've heard all this stuff a million times a Sunday since the dawn of the capitalistic market. Uh, so the best thing is to be diversified. But Josh, you're not diversified. I'm diversified in value stocks. And that's, you know, again, that's my choice. It could hurt me in the long run. I just, I just, I'm telling you, I am a sucker for value. I always have been, always will be. Uh, low PEs, low price books. Uh, we just got this thing about uh, there's a path to complete trade deals. So Mnuchin, stocks open higher. I don't know if y'all saw that. Low PEs, low price books, higher dividend yields. That's value with all question. Uh, intangible assets, I don't, how do you measure that? I don't know. So I'm not messing around with that. All right, as always, smash and we'll see you next time.